Ladies and gentlemen, from the famous Acme Comedy Theater in Hollywood, it's Acme Saturday Night, starring Joseph Limbaugh, Rich Keith, Jordan Crane, Tony Rego, Kevin Small, Aaron Takahashi, and Pauline Yasuda. Musical guest, Catherine Pollack. And your host for Sam Monroe. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mercea Monroe!
I'm Marilyn Monroe. Want to take your picture with Marilyn? Hi, I'm Marilyn Monroe. Want to take your picture with Marilyn for a Hey, day? Marilyn Monroe! We just forgot Marilyn Monroe! Slow your roll a bit. What do you think you're doing? I'm taking pictures with tourists. It's Marilyn Monroe. Um, okay, no offense, but you don't look anything like Marilyn. I am Marilyn Monroe. Really? I don't see it. All right, I'll show you. Uh, excuse me. Yep. Would you like to take your picture with Marilyn Monroe? Oh, yeah, actually, that'd be awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> Maybe who stole my camera? <laughs> Hello, San Diego, and welcome to another episode of We Love It, show for couples by couples, reviewing things that couples love. And now, here's your hosts, Betsy and Greg Maloney. <laughs> Hi, everybody! <laughs> this is We Love It, and I'm Betsy Maloney, and this is my husband, Greg. <laughs> and we are just so thrilled to be here today. Now, our show is all about finding fun things to do with your significant other that you'll both love. <laughs> Carl Lewis. No, don't be 
stupid. I want to go as the Olympic Games in Los Angeles. Okay, well, well, okay. How about how about you can go as the mascot, Sam the Eagle, or 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 I could build the rings and then you can wear the Olympic rings. I want to go as a mascot or rings. I want to go at the games of the twenty third Olympia, all twenty four events and the two demonstration sports. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's possible. Yeah, I don't want to go with something awesome. Look, it, it's 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 impossible to, to make a costume for the entire Olympics. Okay, now I'm sure you can think of something else that you would like to go as. Okay. Oh, 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 oh Dad, I want to go with pie. Okay. <laughs> like uh, like apple pie. No, 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 the number pie. Three, three, five, four, five, 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 I could make a T-shirt and put put the symbol on it, and then you could wear it. No, I don't want to go as a symbol. I want to go as the actual number. You can't do that. How how would I even build that for you? You know, you take the thing and put it in the thingy, and then you push it, and then you stretch it, and you move it. You know? <laughs> no, honey, I don't know. Look, you're gonna have to pick something that I can actually make a costume for. You know, like a person. Maybe a celebrity, like like Hannah Montana. Fine, I'll pick a person. Oh, oh, Dad, Dad, Dad! I want to go as Kim Jong Il. <laughs> It ain't redneck unless we say it is. Welcome to the Redneck Hollywood Review Show with your host, Earl and Kitty Westbrook. That's the boys over there! That's the boys! That's some good film playing on the creator. Hey y'all, welcome to another installment of Redneck Hollywood Review. Mama's not here tonight. Mama what? She's not here tonight. Nope, Mama's nope. not. Bro. 
roller derby and roller derby's badass. <laughs> No, no, you, no, you cannot. You're too little. You get squished. <laughs> Roller derby's for fat, ugly gals. <laughs> and you are neither. What are you? Cute as a button, tiny as a tick. Cute as a button. <laughs> that is right. That is right. That is my sugar. All right. <laughs> we're now going to review. Uh, we're going to review a movie. Um, I hope they serve beer in hell. I uh, couldn't find a clip, but I found a poster. <laughs> that looks dumb as hell. <laughs> well, Daddy, I, I, how can you tell this from the poster? The title sucks. But it has two of your favorite words, hell and beer. It does, it does, but let me explain. Um, <laughs> if you go to hell, you don't get beer, because that's a treat. All right. <laughs> if you go to hell, they's going to make you drink something shitty like prune juice or semen. I'm Leif Ganford and this is the Acme News. Our top story, Roger Avery, co-writer of the film Pulp Fiction, pleaded guilty this week for vehicular manslaughter after a passenger in his car was killed because he was driving drunk. The judge handed down the sentence in four words, bring out the gimp. In entertainment news, whoops. <laughs> In a tell-all book, Mackenzie Phillips, daughter of the Mamas and the Papa singer John Phillips, pointed out to her sister that Mackenzie was always Daddy's favorite. <laughs> Speaking of dirtbag dads, 
singer, singer slash actress, Jessica Simpson's lost dog was found to have been eaten by coyotes. Are you sure it was coyotes? <laughs> She could have had a relapse, that's all I'm saying. In world news, the country of China celebrated its 60th year as a communist nation. What do you get a communist country that turns 60? A bigger defense budget for your own country. Iran says it will let inspectors into its uranium refining facility, quote, soon, very soon. In an unrelated story, eBay was recently flooded with auctions for aluminum tubes, briefcases, yellow cake, and slightly used nuclear weapons. <laughs> A recent autopsy concluded that Michael Jackson was healthy at the time of his death. The Los Angeles coroner who performed the autopsy also declared that Elvis was felt. Really? Really? Elvis, all right. Too soon, Lee. Too soon. I see. I see. A recent study at the University of New Hampshire found that children who, have, who are spanked have lower IQs. But thank God the study was inconclusive about adults who are spanked. <laughs> now that girl looks like a genius. She's got a high IQ. I can promise you that. Forbes magazine came out with its 10 richest Americans list earlier this week. Not on the list, me. <laughs> or any of these people. <laughs> That's the Acme News. I'm Leif Ganfert, and you should be so lucky.
Are you the guy from the Italian bakery? Uh, yes, I come with a very special cake for a very special occasion for a very special delivery, yes? Are you the one I spoke to on the phone? Uh, no, uh, Tony answered. I make the cake. He tells me everything and I say to him, Tony, no, I have killed you. I deliver this one to myself. Alfonso, come on right away. Oh, great. It's going to be a very special day. <laughs> yes, yes. That is why I made you this very special cake. Uh, you must be Tyler. Uh-huh. Yes, I am uh, very excited for it. I made you everybody's favorite. A penis cake! <laughs> <laughs> the uh, Tony, he tell me, the, the man, the gentleman on the phone, he, uh, he want the penis cake. <laughs> Uh, oh, I tell you a secret. I make it uh, cream filled. <laughs> <laughs> like a real man. I put sprinkles for hair and all. I put on icing for throbbing head. Oh. This is a beautiful cake, huh? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, that's a big one. Yeah. It's a big one. It's a big problem, is what it is. Uh, what is problem? You know, like a penis cake? <laughs> <laughs> I ordered. A peanuts cake. <laughs> peanuts. <laughs> what is peanuts? Peanuts. 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 Pe. Pe. Peanuts. Peanuts like the cartoon. Peanuts like the oh peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it the sloppy dog and the pepperoni patty? <laughs> For my son's eighth birthday. <laughs> oh, not the penis party? Oh boy, I kill Tony. No, I kill you. Oh. But whatever made you think we're having a penis party? Uh, from uh, the rest of the order that we get. Uh, Tony, tell me, uh, make sure you bring a full box, everybody's favorite, a box of dildos. <laughs> yes? Dildos? Dildos, yes, yeah, see. Dildos. Yes, dildos. I said candles. A box of candles. <laughs> oh boy. I have killed her. Wait a minute. Oh no.
Acme News update. We now go live to Acme News Junior Senior Meteorological Correspondent <laughs> Richard Keith. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Lee. I'm coming to you live from the Acme Weather Center, where I will be wishing some of our elderly viewers a happy 100th birthday. That's great. Brought to you as always by Jelly. Mmm. <laughs> Delicious. First up is Susan Mablethorpe. Susan turns 100 today. She enjoys bridge. Water aerobics and dancing with the stars. Uh, Rich, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to interrupt you. I just got word that Susan Maplethorpe has passed away. What? Yeah, she um, she died. Tragically shy of making it to her 100th birthday. Oh my God, that's horrible. Yeah, it is. It really is. But we uh, we could probably just move on to the next birthday. So go ahead. All, all right. Um, bye, Susan Maplethorpe. <laughs> Next up is uh, is Dennis Bristol. Dennis turns 100 today, and he enjoys hamburgers, model trains, and his grandkids. His grandkids, who would hate to see anything happen to him. Oh, Rich, sorry again. Um, it would appear that something has happened to Dennis Bristol. What? He died. That happened. <laughs> Why do we have a graphic for that? <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't know, but it's a, it's a good thing we do, because he is dead. It's horrible, Lee. I mean, I can't go on to the next one. I, mean, I think we should just probably skip the rest. No, no, come on, Rich. You're like, I'm sure the rest of the elderly people are fine, all right? You just, you need to wish them a happy birthday. I mean, they made it to 100. That's something to celebrate. It's yeah, only right. Yeah, but you don't understand. The surest way to not make it to 100 is to have me wish you a happy birthday. Why do I feel like my segment is the kiss of death? Because it's got a pretty good track record. Okay, but it's probably just a coincidence, all right? It's not your fault. You can do this. So come on, Rich. You're next right. one. You're right, Leaf. I went to meteorological school. That's... I learned how to do this there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, one more birthday. Yeah. Lydia Green turns 100. Ah, uh, hold on. Don't you dare! Do not tell me she has died. No, she's alive. Thank God. In the hearts and minds of her family that she loves. <laughs> Damn it! Why is this happening to me? Why is our graphics department prepared for this, and how is this at all possible? Well, apparently the three of them were on a small, very unstable commuter plane. Why would three people who are turning 100 be allowed to fly together and choose an unstable commuter plane? They should not be allowed to fly together. They are ruining my weatherman career. I, I'm done. No more dead old people. Good night. Oh, uh, Rich, wait, I, uh, I was hoping that you would wish my mother-in-law happy birthday. <laughs> He's gone. All right, Richard Keith, everyone. I'm Lee Gavin. That's it for this afternoon's update.
So, how are things going in marketing? Is he?
that you're beautiful. <laughs> I'm serious, you are beautiful. And I, I'm going to be honest, I was a little surprised you came up to me at the bar. Why? Well, I, I'm way older than you. Don't <laughs> <laughs> stupid. I mean, I like older men. Yeah? You remind me of my father. <laughs> certain than others, and those things can kill you. What is it? I don't know. It's something. Oh my god. 
director M. Night Shyamalan presents a new film about something unexplainable, something indefinable, something... something. Something's outside. I don't think that something's outside anymore. I think that something is inside. With us. What the hell are you guys talking about? You might think this film has an undefined premise, or a premise so stupid we just decided not to make it clear in the trailer. But the truth is even more terrifying, and more vague than you can possibly imagine. I saw it! It did things. All sorts of things. What did it look like? It had all these different little parts, but it was only one thing. And there were other things there too. That sounds horrifying. No, it doesn't. What color was it? It was red. And yellow. Green and brown and it was scarlet and black. And ochre and peach and ruby and olive and it was violet and fawn and lilac and gold and chocolate and mauve. You can't fight what you can't describe and you can't defeat what you can't define. I'll help you kill it, but it won't be easy. Or it might be too easy. First, could you please tell me what the fuck is going on? Something. I hate all of you. What have you tried so far? Guns, grenades, lasers, bombs, avalanches, tasers. Domesticated wild animals, radio waves, microwaves. Bose wave radios, tears of babies, throwing stuff at it. But if you tried all of that at once? That's not even possible. So what do we do? We run. Or we stay here and hide. One or the other, it's hard to tell. But but one of those two things, I think. We, we could do a, a vote or... We could put him in a hat and choose one. Do you have a hat? Summer something is coming. Something unclear. Something undefined. Something. 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 Seriously, if one of you doesn't tell me what the fuck is going on, I'm gonna do something. Something. something.
There's no going back from here. now presents the semantic and the anti-Semite. There you are. I was literally calling you a million times today. Literally? A million times? Yeah, I, I was literally calling you all day long. Literally. All day long. Yes, where were you? I mean, you must have noticed your phone was literally ringing off the hook. Literally? Yeah, literally. The word literally literally means exact. Precise. Exact. Not subject to hyperbole, and it's not exaggerated in any way. What you're saying when you say, I was literally calling you all day, or I literally called you a million times today, is literally the literal opposite meaning of the word literally. <laughs> literally. I called you a lot today, and you did not answer. Where were you? Turn off my phone because there's a Lord of the Rings marathon on. <laughs> Fucking Jews. <laughs> that was the semantic and the anti Semite. <laughs> Maybe he's got a turnip allergy. 
got lots of turnips. I'm a turnip farmer. I'm perfect. <laughs> You know, I don't know if you're really cut out for this job. If, if you want to call the whole thing off, I'm, I'm okay with that. No, no. Find something to kill him with. The Queen demands it. Oh, 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 the Queen. Oh, 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 Shut up or I will kill you myself, please. <laughs> no, that had never worked. <laughs> I'm Leif Ganford, and this is an Acme News Break. Here now with a report on the recent Groom and Kennel Dog Expo is our very own leisure and lifestyle correspondent, Rudy Bennett. Hello, everyone. Hello. And a special hello to you, Leif Get for Hooten. Yeah, that's, that's not even close to how you pronounce it. No, look at you. You're just like a big old ball of cotton candy. All furry on the outside, melt in the mouth. <laughs> yeah, see, I'm actually hoping that you have some sort of report to give here. Rudy, I do, so. I do. Settle down there, fiddle pot. <laughs> fiddle it's not pot. a word, I don't care. <laughs> Today's leisure and lifestyle segment is dedicated to a new phenomenon called creative dog grooming. All right. Dog groomers compete in the art of making standard poodles look pretty and happy. Okay. Let's take a look at our, our, some of the contestants. First up, I like to call this one Panda Express. All right, now that is... That's, that's a dog in there. That's an actual poodle. How fucking cute is that? That is a poodle in there. Wow. Uh, how about that? My leaf game for tootin' hootin' pootin'. Actually, that's a little closer. A little to how closer, you isn't it? So. Next up is one I like to call Steel Curtain. Look at that Pittsburgh Steelers football dog. That's a dog in there, people. Oh my god! They actually, they just color the hair to look like that. That is amazing. I'm, you know what I'm really impressed with is the What's fact that? that you know something about football. Really? Yeah. You give me a break. I mean, tight men and pants swatting each other on the bottom. I'll be your tight end, Leaf Gander Tudor. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna come up against a pretty big defense. On Ooh. That one, so. Well, it's fourth and I'm long. I'm gonna go for it. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call offsides. <laughs> we'll run that same play. Next up is Mr. Ed, the horse dog. Look at that. Oh, God in heaven. Look at how pissed off that dog is. <laughs> that dog must hate his life. I can empathize. Really? I put a saddle on you. Next up, we got Pirate Dog. Ahoy, mateys. Oh, look at the size of that winch. That is one big bitch. All right, you know what? I, I don't think it's appropriate to use that term like that. So. Oh, I'm sorry. What should I call a female dog? <laughs> They're called a bitch. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I thought you were actually talking about the woman in the picture. I guess that's my mistake. <laughs> I was. <laughs> Our last dog is my favorite. I like to call this dog the fairy dog. Oh, look at that! How cute is that, Leaf? Gash darn tootin' so cutin'. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Something right. must have broke back there. 
I want to put some fairy dust on you and ride you like a unicorn. <laughs> you like it when I rub on your knee like that? That's not my knee, Rudy. That's not my hand. Rudy Bennett, everyone! That's it for the Zachary News Break. seconds with two Abercrombie door models. So where'd you work before this? I was in that plastic box at the standard. <laughs> I'm starving. That reminds me, I threw up the most delicious smoothie this morning. Welcome, Welcome to, to Abercrombie. Abercrombie. <laughs> Oh, 
It's so funny when you're down There isn't a helpful friend around Cause people love you just today They don't give a damn if you go or stay I'll pay you every penny that's to my name I know you say I'm falling ill so put me on your crazy pills cause I, 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 I've come to change Like 
the Dirty Sanchez. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that is. It's a, it's a deviant sex act involving a poop mustache. <laughs> I just love spicy Cajun food. I want so much sauce that it smears all over me. Introducing the new Carl's Jr. Dirty Six. Sometimes you need too much sauce. stuff on your chest. Thank you. 